Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Dulos. I'm going to introduce Easier UVM. I'll start off by just saying a couple of words about UVM itself, in case you're not familiar with UVM, and then I'll go ahead and introduce Dulos's Easier UVM. Well, UVM itself stands for the Universal Verification Methodology. That's a verification methodology for System Verilog. System Verilog with UVM supports constrained random coverage-driven verification. If you've started using coverage-driven verification in recent, in recent years, chances are you'll have been using System Verilog for doing that, and UVM has now become the only show in town for making best use of System Verilog for doing verification. UVM is an open source System Verilog based class library. It's also an Accelera standard, and that's the most important thing about UVM. It's a standard. It's supported by all the major and minor simulator vendors and other tool vendors as well. So if you're thinking about using System Verilog for verification right now, you really should be using UVM because it's what everybody else is doing. Why UVM? Well, UVM encapsulates best practice. That means that your code will be consistent, it'll be uniform, you won't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to figuring out how to do things in System Verilog, and you can also avoid a lot of verification pitfalls by taking advantage of all of the good things that are built into UVM. Above all, UVM is about reuse. Reuse of everything. Reuse of code, reuse of people. So with UVM, you can reuse verification IP, that is verification components. You can reuse verification environments, that is your test bench. You can reuse individual tests. And you can also reuse human skills. So if you're starting a verification project right now and you're going out hiring people, your best bet is, is going to be to go out and hire people who know UVM, because UVM knowledge is getting more and more widespread. Also, there's more and more work going in now integrating a complete UVM ecosystem and infrastructure, UVM tools, editors, debuggers, graphical environments, coding standards. But UVM itself is very challenging. UVM is not easy. There's something like 300 classes in the UVM library. And the documentation for UVM is well known to have certain holes. Personally, I don't think the documentation is bad, but people often criticise it for not telling them what they specifically want to know. Also, it's certainly true that in UVM there are many ways to do the same thing. That's partly because of UVM's legacy, because UVM is a standard, UVM is backward compatible with previous methodologies, and all of that is a good thing, but it doesn't make UVM particularly challenging for beginners to learn and use. So at Dulos we deliver training classes. People who already have a great grasp of VHDL or Verilog typically choose to come on a five-day training class to learn to use System Verilog, but that doesn't teach them UVM. There's then a further four-day class to learn UVM, and most of that time really is necessary. So learning and using UVM is a very, very significant challenge, and that can make it an obstacle for small companies and large companies alike. That's where Easier UVM from Dulos comes in. Easier UVM has two parts to it. A set of coding guidelines that provide just one way to do it, and an automatic code generator. The coding guidelines and the code generator are free to use, they're open, they're non-proprietary, they don't tie you into any particular tool vendor, and they conform completely to the UVM standard. You can also decide exactly how far you want to go with the coding guidelines and the code generator. You can just pick and choose individual parts, or you can use the whole thing. So if you do decide to take advantage of easier UVM, you won't be getting tied in at all. Dulos are not a tool vendor. We don't actually sell tools. We sell training. Easier UVM offers a number of benefits. Easier UVM has actually been around a few years now. It started off just as an approach to learning and using UVM, 
And now, as you can see, it's morphed into a very specific set of coding guidelines and a code generator that actually has been used on industrial projects. So the first benefit of Easier UVM is just helping you to learn UVM. You can use Easier UVM as, as a learning aid, and if you do nothing else, that'll bring benefit. You can also use Easier UVM to help you learn best practice. There's lots of good advice built into the coding guidelines. You can use Easier UVM to avoid pitfalls. And you can use the, both the guidelines and the coding generator to help you to become productive with UVM more quickly. The code generator has been put into use on industrial projects, and in certain cases, it can help people get up and running with UVM much more quickly than if they were trying to do everything from scratch on their own. The coding guidelines and code generator also help you to use UVM consistently, and that can reduce the burden of supporting a UVM code base. So if everybody follows the same coding guidelines, then the UVM code will look the same and be written in a consistent way. And that can be further enforced by making use of the code generator. So let's take a look at the coding guidelines and at the code generator. The easier UVM coding guidelines are quite extensive, but they're mostly common sense. They're actually presented to you in two different forms on the website. First of all, there's a summary of the coding guidelines, and you can take that summary page and copy and paste it for your own purposes. So you can incorporate it into your own company's specific coding guidelines if you like. The coding guidelines aren't rocket science. There's not any big surprises in there, but they are a lot more prescriptive than the standard UVM documentation. So where UVM gives you choices, we prescribe a specific way of doing things. Sometimes that specific way of doing things will just be really good advice. Sometimes we'll just have made an arbitrary decision to do things one way rather than another. You can use this entire set of coding guidelines as they are. So you can take the summary of the coding guidelines and use it as a checklist on your project. Or you can adapt the guidelines to your own purposes. You can just take the few guidelines that you think are particularly useful and discard the rest. Or you can take these coding guidelines and merge them within your own project specific or company specific coding guidelines. As well as the summary of the guidelines, there's also a very detailed description that gives a full explanation and rationale for each guideline and also gives further advice on how to use UVM effectively. Also woven in with the detailed coding guidelines, there's example code and there's diagrams to give you a better conceptual view on how things fit together. Or you can also use the code generator to generate code that's compliant with the easier UVM coding guidelines. So let's take a look at the code generator. The code generator generates everything that you need in a UVM environment to get running. What you do is to specify the interfaces to the design under test, then run the code generator, and the code generator generates the system Verilog interfaces, the UVM agents, the complete UVM environment, and that includes an initial set of sequences and tests, UVM configuration database information, including configuration objects to configure the agents, and factory overrides. And all of this generated code just runs out of the box. You can then gradually populate the missing pieces in order to create a complete set of production code. Let's have a look at the architecture of the code generator. So to run the code generator, you must point the generator at your design under test and write a template file for each of the interfaces to the DUT. The code generator then runs and generates a complete UVM environment. In order to make that UVM environment run, you'll also have to provide code at least for drivers and monitors, and you do that by writing include files. Those include files are then linked into the generated code, and that means you can regenerate the code multiple times from the template files without having to modify it. 
You can use include files for a lot of different things within the generated environment and that gives you a lot more flexibility to regenerate the code because it avoids the need to edit the code manually a lot of the time. Of course, all the generated code conforms to the Easy UVM guidelines. Well, there's a number of different ways that you can use the code generator. You can get a lot of benefit by using the code generator simply as a learning aid. Let's face it, not everybody is going to want to use a code generator to generate production code on their projects. But nonetheless, you can use the, the code generator just as a learning aid to get you started. The cool thing about it is that it generates actual working code that's specific to your particular design under test. And that can be really great for convincing both yourself and your manager that it is possible to get complete working UVM environments up and running relatively quickly. The second and slightly more sophisticated way to use the code generator is to actually use it as scaffolding to generate early versions of your production code. What I mean by scaffolding is that you're going to start off using the code generator to generate some of the actual code that you'll use on project. But then at a particular point, you'll tear down the scaffolding, you'll stop using the code generator, and you'll just take the generated code and use that as the basis for your own code, editing it manually. Now that might sound a bit defeatist because we're throwing away the code generator, but it does have the benefit that all the production code starts off being consistent because it was automatically generated. And you can then add, if you add all of your project specific code to it. The third and most ambitious option is to try to continually regenerate the production code. That is possible if you make clever use both of include files to include the user-defined code within the generated code, and also, if necessary, either modify the code generator script or add further post-processing scripts in order to modify the generated code if necessary. So if you make smart use of include files to drag in user-defined code and scripts to modify the generated code, it should be possible to actually continually regenerate the production code throughout your project. So how do you get hold of all of this good stuff? Well, just go to the Doulos website. On the Doulos website at the URL shown here, you can get free access to the easier UVM guidelines. You can also download the generator. Again, it's free. It comes up with an Apache 2.0 license, so you're free to take the generator and even modify it if you wish for your own purposes. There's a lot of good things on the Doulos website, including tutorial information on UVM and a lot of other subjects. At Doulos, we're global training providers offering training in hardware design, hardware verification, ARM processor technology, and embedded software and embedded systems. So if you want to know any more about UVM, or if you're interested in receiving training on any other subject shown on this slide, go to our website, www.doulos.com, and check it out.